Welcome to the video clip for complex number roots using solver tool in MS Excel. In this video clip, which is the part one of the series, you will find a background information about how to set up the system of equations that will have to be solved using solver tool in order to determine the complex number roots. So what you should know is that Microsoft Excel doesn't have built-in complex number arithmetic operations, although you can declare complex numbers in this fashion. So for example, if I had to write 1 plus 2i, I'd be writing in the formula bar equals complex parenthesis 1 comma 2, hit enter and I'll get 1 plus 2i. Likewise, I can create another complex number, say z sub 2 equals complex 2 comma 1 and that would give me 2 plus i. But then when I try to sum them using the sum command like equals sum b1 through b2 it gives me zero. So that tells me that's not correct because I know from complex algebra rules that real number parts of the two have to be added and complex number parts have to be added separately. So as such the answer should have been 3 plus 3i but that's not the case. So how do we circumvent this problem? We can do so using some rules of complex algebra. Let's take a simple general example. I put quote and quote general because as such it's not general but it has all the features that would be desired in a illustration yet keeping the algebra to the simplest possible. So to that end let's consider the polynomial x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 1. If you were to factorize it will be immediate that it will be x minus 1 multiplied by the factor x squared plus 1. And when you equate that to 0, you get the roots x is 1 or negative i or positive i. So you have three roots. I know the answer, but it's not that I'm trying to show how to solve a cubic equation, but I'm trying to illustrate how to go about solving a equation to find roots, real and complex using Microsoft Excel. So the important emphasis is on how to do this computationally for any arbitrarily large polynomial or any uh, other function for which you can apply complex algebra rules. So we say let's guess the root b x equals a plus i b where i the imagine, imaginary number is square root of negative 1 and so I'm just plugging in x equals a plus i b in these terms and I have color coded them so you can easily follow should you need to pause and view this carefully or do it by hand to verify my calculations. And expanding it gives me these terms. Again, I'm not going to read aloud all these terms because you can see them on the screen, but I highly recommend you to actually do this uh, exercise in paper and pencil or otherwise so that you can be certain of how I arrived at this result. Continuing on, I am going to apply the rules for complex algebra in that like I know i equals square root of negative 1, so i squared will be negative 1, i cubed will be negative i. I didn't need to do i to the power 4, but if I had to, it would be 1. And applying it to this equation here, the equation transforms to this form in that i square b square takes the form minus 3ab square because i square is negative 1. Likewise, here i square b square became negative b square. Other terms stay as is, but now I'm going to collect all the real parts and all the imaginary parts of this equation. So, this is what it results in. And in case if you wonder, how can I be so certain? Here's the check that I have done in that I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there are total 10 terms and so I'm not guilty of any omission in that I do have 10 terms here as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 plus 4 is 10. With that said, now these equations have to be solved simultaneously because if this equation here has to equal to 0, the real part must be 0 and simultaneously the imaginary part has to be zero as well and that is what I will demonstrate using Microsoft Excel file in part two of the video clip so please do be sure to view that as well with that said I'll stop here thank you for your time